So one of the things I have found along the way when doing a bunch of agent decoding is that the way to get the best results is not to expect a one prompt masterpiece, but it's to expect an iterative process of prompting over and over again, trying different models, trying different prompts until you get it refined to the exact thing that you're looking for. So, so what do I mean by an iterative process? Well, I launched Agentic Jumpstart, and this is what it currently looks like. And it looks very basic, right? It's a very like AI generated kind of look. And it has like, you know, this little badge at the top, which is the clear sign that Gemini 3 kind of created this, right? And you scroll down, there's some subtle animations that show up, which, you know, over time of using this, I realized, you know what, I don't even want the animations. I think there's just more that we can do with this. I think this needs to be larger. And sometimes just taking a step away from your application and coming back in a, in a week or two, you start to see things that you can maybe improve. So for example, the landing page, I went ahead and cooked a lot on it to kind of do these subtle little improvements, which I got to hide my head. So basically it's the same, but the main difference was I made this video larger. So the intro video is a little bit larger. And we also have a subtle background in the back with these little check boxes, which just kind of adds to it. I removed the animation and I added a couple of subtle backgrounds as well to like the course overview page. And uh, also over here, building the perfect curriculum section. So again, it's not amazing. It's not super great. I would still give it like a seven or eight out of 10, but it's better than it was before. And then in a week or two, I'll probably come back and try to find ways to improve it as well. Now, I also did some refactoring on the course. Now, this one's the actual impressive one, in my opinion. So right now, this, it doesn't look bad. The course doesn't look bad. And I would say that there are some things that could be improved. And what I did is I spent some time kind of looking around about how other people do courses. So for example, up here, we got the, you know, the 1080p switcher. Why is it here not inside the video editor? The video editor I'm using is kind of like the built-in HTML. You know, this border around this video is kind of off-putting. It just doesn't look that great. It works. It's functional. We can go through here. We can watch different videos and navigate. And then also I noticed that like just the navigation between new videos takes a little bit of time, right? And so I spent some time also just prompting AI, getting ideas, doing ideation, finding other things online, like on Dribbble. I think it's called Dribble. Yeah, Dribble has like all the designs. Okay, and this is what the new course platform looks like. So you can see here, it just looks a lot cleaner, a lot more professional. We have nice clear indicators that we can like have a segment open. We have good indicators, which I talked to someone else on my Discord about, which by the way, I have a great Discord. If you want to join my Agentic Jumpstart Discord, uh, let's go here, Discord. There's a link on agenticjumpstart.com. You can join the Discord. We got a lot of people who are really enthusiastic about learning with AI and building with AI. And I think you guys should join this free Discord if you want to be part of this new wave of how engineering basically is going to be happening in the future. So go check it out and also check out my course. If you want to learn about agentic coding, I got a course, but let me not over market it before people start unsubscribing from my channel. So let's go back and just kind of show some of the differences between the left and the right. Notice that it just looks, you know, a little cleaner. There's less padding between the video and this versus here. There's like so much extra padding. It just seems kind of like, I don't know, too zoomed in, I guess. There's quick navigations where you can quickly navigate to any of these courses by just clicking on this and going to it. You can switch your modules. Over here, we have a progress indicator. So you can see when you're about to be finished with the get starting, if I click it, notice that it's basically done now. I can keep on clicking the videos. You get some nice progress to know when you're about to be done with that segment like this. You can mark this as completed. I did refactor the whole header. So now it's less cluttered. Like this has moved up uh, to an actual like panel type of thing. The changer is actually overlaid on the video itself. So you can switch this to 1080p, which is a whole nother feature I added. I didn't have support for different types of uh, playbacks, like quality playbacks. And I added that in with like one or two Claude code prompts. So now I actually have a, the ability when I upload a video, it automatically transcribes it down to the other uh, version qualities. And then you can actually watch those in the video. Also transcripts. This automatically looks over the video and runs it through OpenAI to get the transcripts from it. Oh, and then the coolest thing I added is I added in the ability to go here and change the icons over here. Because before they were all kind of like hard coded the same icons. So now you can actually edit them. I can change this to be a keyboard if I want to save it. And now a keyboard shows up. So it's like the subtle things that you can add to a UI to just make it a little bit better. And also we have the ability to search. So if I type in like uh, environment, it's going to take you straight to the section that has the word environment. Now I will say I got these ideas from another course platform. And that's kind of what you need to do when you're doing agent decoding is go and ideate, go see how other people are doing things and don't necessarily steal them, but you can incorporate the same ideas into your own code base. Also, you can use Dribbble to get inspiration and ideas, like go and look at other people's websites and designs. If you're not a designer and you're a coder, you probably need to go and find professionals and figure out how they designed. So you might ask, well, how exactly did I take it from here 
to here? Like what was the actual process? And I will say that typically what I do is I will start with a reference HTML file or a reference screenshot of something that looks nice. And then I will take it over to the Gemini and I will say, hey, I need you to take this example. Like for example, if I had this screenshot here, I would just paste it in and I would probably do a prompt like this. Can you please analyze the image I provided and I need you to create a markdown file that describes the spacing, the padding, the typography, uh, the elements, the rounded edges on cards and borders. Are we even using cards? Is What type of style is it? Glass morphic? Is it flat design, et cetera? Do a deep down, deep dive analysis on the image and then provide me a markdown file which I can use to give to an LLM or another designer to try to reapply these styles to any page in my application. Okay, so something like that, I would probably start with. That's like my iteration one. Again, the iterative process of using an LLM is the key. You have to start with this prompt and then you can start applying that markdown file to all your different pages. So now that we have like this page looking good, I can use that. And then also what I end up doing, like once you focus in on one page and you get it looking really nice, you can then prompt the LLM again. So like what I would probably do once I've done my first iteration and I've made one page look really nice, I would then go back and find that learn page. Let's go to source, let's go to routes. And I literally drop this in as well. And then I say, can you please analyze all of the Tailwind CSS and components that were used to make this page look nice? And then document in code how I could then use those same type of reusable components or Tailwind classes to other pages in my application to also make them consistent with the learn page that I just pasted to you. Okay, and that's the second iteration. I would then take the design that I just added to my code base, and then I would find a way to apply it to other pages. Now, the third iteration, if you want to actually kick this off, you can have multiple Claude subagents basically do this all of your code base. So I can kick off like six or seven different subagents using this markdown file that it's going to generate, throw it into Opus 4.5, and say, hey, I need you to kick off 10 subagents, go through all my application components, go through all my pages, and refactor every page to match this new consistent theme that I've defined. And remember that you need to go and update the global CSS file and the Tailwind CSS file so you're not copying and pasting styles everywhere. And also make sure that it's light mode enabled and dark mode enabled. So that's the main way I like to do basically iterative uh, refactoring on an existing code base. I start with the example code base. I go find something that looks better. I break it down into markdown. I break it down to a design document. I paste it in. I refactor a page and then I take that refactoring. I break it down even more to another markdown as like a template of how a developer could apply it to other pages. And then I just apply that to everything, which has worked for me. But if you guys have a different approach that you guys like to do this type of refactoring, let me know. And then also playing around the models. Sometimes Gemini 3 Pro is the best for the first iteration. Like Use Gemini 3 Pro to refactor a page to make it look nicer and then keep on doing that. Just keep on refactoring, refactoring it. And one tip I have found is you can actually just go like this and say, hey, I need you to refactor the learn page and keep loading up a browser to port 4000 and going to the learn page and taking a screenshot to verify that it's better than it once was. I've attached a screenshot of how it currently looks. I need you to take this from a 6 out of 10 to like a 9 out of 10. Okay, and then I probably go to like my old app. I just take a screenshot of this. And then I would just paste it in. And the cool thing about cursor is that it can actually load up a browser over here in a new tab. And then it can take screenshots of what it sees. And so you can basically have it work in a loop and just keep on iterating on itself without you having to come in and like prompt it every time. And then sometimes it'll get done. It might be like a seven or eight out of 10. You have to go and reprompt it again to make it better. And then you might have to throw in special keywords like, you know, add a nice uh, subtle SVG backgrounds or add some gradients or fix the padding or the margin of buttons, make it look more professional. I will say there's also something on my Agentic Jumpstart site. If you go to agents here, I, you'll see that there's a Gemini 5% better prompt. And I use this all the time when interacting with Gemini. Basically, this tells Gemini to think really hard about what it's about to do. And this is something I found on Twitter posted by the actual like Google team. And they found that this prompt actually makes Gemini perform like 5% better. Honestly, I don't know how good the claims are. This could have just been like some clickbait thing or some like marketing thing, but I've been using it and it does seem to make the output of the LLM a little bit better. It makes the designs a little bit more fresh and I think you should give it a shot. Okay. So if you guys enjoyed anything I talked about in this video, go to agenticjumpstart.com and check out my course. I have a lot of tips and tricks over, I think 70 videos now. Let me scroll down and kind of check it out. Yeah, I got 70 videos over 11 hours of content. And yeah, I think I'm gonna keep on adding stuff along the way as I'm learning because as I build out Automaker, which is another tool that me and my community have been kind of building out, you know, I'm learning a ton of things from working with others who are like really all in on agentic coding. 
And I'm basically learning a ton from them and just adding it to my course, the things I've learned along the way. So I think it's a very great value if you guys want to learn the things I've been learning, because again, this site looks pretty good too. I mean, there's some things we can improve, but I think overall this thing is looking pretty fresh. Uh, let me just go ahead and show you some of the cool things we can do here. I'm going to load up a card here. Just go ahead and reduce the card opacity, reduce that. Okay. And then we are going to change the theme. I kind of like the theme for this one to be the red. Uh, let's go to red. Here we go. Okay. So again, it's like, how do you get an application to look somewhat decent? Uh, in my opinion, this looks pretty good. I'm not going to say it looks bad. It looks pretty good. There's probably things we can improve to make it a 10 out of 10, but overall I'm a developer and not a designer. And we are able to basically just use LLMs to do ideation and really improve our application to make it look really good. And these are some of the things that I'm going to show you how to do in my agentic jumpstart course. So definitely don't sleep on it. Go check it out. I will be increasing the price at some point, probably after Christmas right now, there's a discount. So go act now if you want to get that uh, current price. Have a good day and happy coding.